More news on the vaccine front that made November such a standout month as Moderna announces a final readout of more than 94% efficacy for its experimental COVID vaccine, with the company quickly uh, moving to seek emergency youth authorization from the FDA. For more on that, let's kick off today's show with Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani, who caught up with Moderna CEO earlier on today. Anjali? Thanks, Zach. Yes, so uh, exciting news. Obviously, this makes it the second vaccine that we are seeing apply for emergency use authorization mm -hmm. in the U.S., opening the door really for at least two vaccine candidates potentially uh, by the end of the year. So, of course, that is something to look forward to, both of them being on mRNA uh, platform, meaning that this technology has now been fully validated with its exceptional uh, efficacy results. Of course, testing in the real world is going to be an entirely different scenario, not knowing how long the vaccine will last uh, its protection or uh, you know what individuals may have uh, different reactions or, or how uh, you know protective it is on some of these individuals but the key thing that really has a lot of experts excited is the 100% efficacy against severe disease and so when while the vaccine does protect of course, that 94% of the population that got it uh, the 100% against severe disease which is that second endpoint holds a lot of promise for what we're seeing as sort of the key uh, issue, right, which is hospitalizations and the strain that we're seeing right now with more than 93,000 hospitalizations reported across the country. That's something to uh, really be impacted by this. So listen to what CEO Stefan Bansell had to say about that earlier today. We had 30 cases of severe disease. And of those 30, 30 were on placebo and zero were on our vaccine. So if you think about what has happened in the country, People are getting infected. If they get a severe disease, they end up in the hospital. And if you get you know, a bad case, they end up into the ICU, and the worst case outcome, of course, is death. If you can stop that whole cascade, that is, I believe, a game changer. As you can hear, and that's a really uh, what health experts have said, is that this is one of the key metrics that uh, really helps validate the vaccine itself. Zach? And Anjali, I thought it was interesting, you know, um, you talked to him about just how many doses are likely to come to market by the end of the year, but also this question about whether there are enough materials in place. I think he talked about specifically um, some concerns there about whether all the raw materials will be in fact in place in order to push out the scale or the amount of vaccines that are gonna be necessary next year. What do the supply chains look like right now on that front? So I'm glad you brought up that point. That's actually something that a lot of health officials have been pointing to. You know, when we talk about drug development, when you talk about pills, it's a lot easier to estimate and have accurate numbers about the dosage that is available because the construction of it is very uh, meticulous and it's very predictable. When you're talking about a vaccine, it requires uh, some elements of live, uh, you know, production, and the raw materials that make it up are sometimes um, it's not exactly an, an exact science. And so that plays a role in their ability to estimate the doses. And so going off of that, we have heard sort of bits and pieces when it comes to which companies have been doing their part of really ramping up, whether it's for the production or the logistics, where, you know, when it comes to dry ice, that's of course necessary for Pfizer's um, mm -hmm. or test flights for the airlines that are going to be taking on that role. Uh, as it stands right now, uh, you know, they anticipate being able to get all of this material. But of course, at the end of the day, it's just how quickly that can be done in the labs. 